Gabby asks, Hey Adam, what's the best way to record as close to raw clips with an Elgato card? Is that even possible? I get this question a lot, and so I want to go ahead and make a video about it instead of just purely typing it out like I do every single time. Raw video is its own kind of thing. It is literally raw video, raw sensor data from the camera. Uh, this is used from my cinema camera, my Ursa Mini Pro, for example. It's, it's, it's in its raw, own raw video format. Typically, this can't be transmitted over HDMI. ProRes RAW is kind of changing that, but for the most part, capture cards aren't recording that, especially not gaming ones. And something like a game console isn't outputting it either. So then you might ask, okay, why do people keep asking you this if that's what you want? Well, there's a specific program that I've pointed out called Teardrop, which is a frame rate analyzer, and you want as close to uncompressed or raw video as possible in order for it to really differentiate one frame from another. You may also just want the highest quality copy of your video footage so that you can have the best possible result once you do a whole lot of effects to it and compress it down for YouTube or what have you. So I'm going to show you three different ways to get basically lossless video from most capture cards. This will work on most USB 3 or PCIe capture cards. Older capture cards that have a built-in H.264 encoder, this is virtually impossible with, um, but with most like the Elgato HD60 Pro, the 4K60 Pro, the HD60S, Avermedia's Live Gamer Ultra Extreme 4K, most modern capture cards this will work with. So we talked about the why, but before we get to the how, let's talk about Nerd or Die, you know. My favorite sponsor on this channel because they have such great stream overlays. They do some really good work making tools to make streamers' lives easier. Most of their overlays at this point have one-click setup in OBS, and they are always optimizing that to make it faster. They do a lot of new custom graphics. They're constantly releasing new graphics. Of course, the synth wave and the retro wave themes are some of my favorite, of course, with my VHS aesthetic on the channel, but they got some really good stuff. eposfox.gg slash nerdodie and use coupon code eposfox to save 10% at checkout. Firstly, we're going to do it in OBS Studio, and then we're going to go to another program and then back to OBS Studio. Uh, there's actually under the simple output settings, uh, there's actually a option for a lossless quality, tremendously large file size. It'll give you a warning because the file sizes will be massive. You probably want to be recording to an SSD. It's going to take up a ton of space. This uses the UT video codec in an AVI container, which is completely lossless. It, it actually says right here. Uh, up to upwards of seven gigabytes per minute at high resolutions and frame rates. So absurdly high quality. It will be very slow to edit in your video editing program, however, due to the way most of the AVI lossless um, codecs record really, really fast, but then they're really, really slow to decode. So you can record them really quickly, but then playing them back in your video editor and stuff will be very laggy. So you may want to transcode it to QuickTime, uh, GoPro Cineform or ProRes, which we'll cover later in order to edit them a little bit more smoothly. But OBS actually has just a dedicated lossless mode in here if you want to roll with that. Our second option actually consists of two different programs. Uh, one is virtual dub and you come over here, you choose your uh, video capture device. You go to capture AVI, choose your device. We're going to choose here we go. Our capture device for the Xbox and then under capture you go or what is it under compression video compression you choose your output codec to, to typically you want to use Lagerith lossless again this is another codec which will encode very quickly but will be super laggy to actually edit click OK capture capture video save it out you have lossless video it's stretching out kind of weird here but ignore that it's the UI does not work well on Windows 10. Secondarily, you have virtual dub, but there's also another option that's really, really old, but still a good one called Amarek. Now, Amarek used to be used in a lot of fighting game tournaments for capturing uh, raw video, you know, uncompressed video and then playing because the preview is very lag free compared to OBS here. So you click the little settings button here. Go over to device, find your capture device, find the format you wish to capture at. So 1920 by 1080 60 FPS, choose your audio device, hit apply but then you come over here to recording and then you choose your codec here. So if you choose update codec list, I'm actually using a, an uh, UT video codec, just like in OBS Studio's lossless mode, which again, fast to encode, slow to decode, hit okay. 
it'll load up your preview once it gets here. There we go. It's reading it as four by three, so I must have a setting wrong somewhere, but then you can encode and you're getting lossless video. <laughs> Lastly, there's a plugin from Zaymar known as StreamFX, formerly as it was an FFM dedicated FFmpeg plugin for OBS Studio. This one's called StreamFX and actually adds in a couple encoders to OBS Studio. Of course, finding the wiki here is annoying, but it specifically adds, they only list NVENC H.264 and H.265, but it also adds ProRes encoding directly native to OBS Studio. And so if we open up OBS here, we have our capture card running with our Xbox One input. If we go over here to output and recording, under the encoder section, you actually have a couple new listings for NVIDIA's Envink, and you can use HEVC and get lossless encoding. That's how I actually record this video right here. But you also have the option of using ProRes, and this is what I use for my video capture card reviews. That way I have the highest quality copy, so there's no encoding artifacts hindering how the quality of clips are. If you are using ProRes, you need to use the MOV recording format or container option here. And then scroll down. Uh, you have a few different options for the most part for most machines because this is very CPU intensive. This is not something your GPU is doing. This is running purely on your processor. Most computers won't be able to do past 1080p. It is very intense. Um, a lot of computers will struggle even with 1080p with this, uh, but you have a few different options. I typically go with 422HQ, even though technically OBS isn't really doing 422 encoding. Um, and then pretty much leaving all of that alone is fine. And then under advanced, I have it set to I444 because some of the capture cards I review do operate in the 444 color chroma space. Uh, so I leave that there. Keep everything at partial in OBS's advanced settings. You only want to use full in your actual individual video capture properties if your capture card is running at that. But OBS needs set to, to partial or most video editors and YouTube and most web browsers will give you issues. And then you're recording in ProRes, assuming your computer can handle it and you get lossless video just like an Atomos would record or whatever. One cool thing about recording straight to ProRes is ProRes is extremely efficient to actually decode and play back on your video editor for editing. So while the lossless AVI option I showed you at the start of the video is really quick to encode but very very slow to actually edit, this takes a lot of work to encode on your processor but when you're editing it is super snappy and lightweight and so that is one advantage here. And that's pretty much it. There's no magic to it. Uh, OBS Studio can encode losslessly and there's other options as well, depending on the codec that you want. And I do recommend if you have access to a program like Adobe Media Encoder, transcoding your AVI lossless encodings to either ProRes or GoPro Cineform, as those will be actually smaller than the AVI options, but also, but still equally lossless, um, but also really, really fast to edit in your video editor. Obviously, most of these would be redonkulous to upload straight to YouTube. I do personally upload uh, uncompressed DNxHR footage to YouTube myself, but that's because I have gigabit fiber. Most people can't handle that. Uh, but here are some options for you if you want to record lossless video. Like I said, get this question a lot. Here you go. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. Uh, check us out on Floatplane for early access to videos, behind the scenes content. Uh, join our Discord, eposfox.gg slash Discord, and follow some social media as you see on screen. I'll see you next time. Thank you to Gabby for the question.